Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this Christmas card. Um, I shared it on my blog uh, a few days ago, not quite sure how long, um, but somebody said could I show how it was made um, and yes of course I'm always happy to do that. This is going to be my last Christmas card video for 2019, okay. Um, after I'd made that one I upped it a little bit because when I showed Hubby, he said that looks like a bauble. So I thought I'd make it look even more like a bauble by putting the gold foil hanger bit with the bow on it. Okay, um, so I don't think I'm really going to be changing anything. This is what I'll be doing. So I'll start off by showing you the card pieces that you're going to be needing. Um, all the metric measurements will be in the box underneath the video. Um, I think this might be a little bit of a long video and I'm just trying to uh, keep the time down. So to start off with you need a card base which is eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth inches. You need two pieces of gold foil which measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches. You need two pieces of whisper white which measure three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches. You need a piece for your sentiment which should measure about um, one and three quarter inches by three inches. You need a piece of whisper white which is about three inches by three and a half inches which is for the forest. You need a piece of gold foil for the frame around here. Mine is actually three by three, but it's very tight, so I'm going to suggest to you that you need a piece that's about three and a half by three and a half inches. And then you need two pieces of foil that are approximately three quarters of an inch wide and about three inches long. You also need a scrap for the bow, and you also need a narrow piece for the hanger or the bauble. Um, this was just a scrap that was in my bag because I save all my little bits like this. And this is mm, about three sixteenths of an inch wide, but you know, something like that would be fine. So where shall we start? I think we'll start doing the stamping with the forest first. I've used two different trees here, two different stamp sets on these. On my first one I used Merry Moose, which is that one there. I used the bigger one. Um, but I felt that was a bit too solid. Um, it probably isn't, looking at it. Um, but I think that this one comes up more pointy rather than this. So it was an experiment and I decided I liked this one so I'm going to stick with this one which is from, um, let me just start building a pile over there that I don't need. Um, so this one is from Winterwoods, I'll be using that one. Um, while I'm doing stamp sets I'll go through these others. Um, the May You Feel the Glow of God's Peace this Christmas is from God's Peace and inside I've also done the verse which is here which is Fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour which is Christ the Lord which is Luke 2 10 to 11. Um, so that's that stamp set. And this one I'm not using, but just to show you that the bow that I've used is from the Bouquet Bunch Framelits, and there is actually a stamp that goes with it. Um, the pictures on the front here is at 60% of real size. Oh, there we go. You can see that. The... There we go, can you see that? Yep. Okay. But it's one of those stamps that is happy to stand alone. Right, so that's all of those. So stamping ink first, we're going to do 
then we'll go on to the embossing stamping. That's right, that will work nicely. So that will be for that one. We need that for embossing, that one for embossing. So it's that, that, and inside. And then after that I can work out what I need for dies. So this one here for the trees, I'm not unduly worried about um, using my embossing buddy. Um, I didn't use it on either of the others, but I suppose as I'm doing a video, just in case, how awful if I didn't use it and I finished up with splodges of gold all over the place. Okay, so I have done it. Won't be lazy. Um, that's the point. Should you do it before stamping or after stamping? Does it matter? I wouldn't have thought so. Have I got another piece here? Yep, let's try that one again. I'll do the um, stamping first. I'm using black memento ink and I'm going to stamp one tree and then stamp it again and then stamp it a third time so that it's got light and dark. It builds like a forest at the back. Okay, so this one I'm going to do over here. And then I'm going to lift it and move it over slightly. So that will come up lighter. And then I'm going to come lighter again up here. That wasn't much lighter, was it? I must have pressed quite heavy on the third layer, I suppose. Right, now this one, let me just double check how I did this. Oh, this one almost, well it has disappeared, look. The dark one on this side has been covered up by the gold. Interesting. Um, so is there any point doing this? Yes, there is, because every time you do this, it's going to work out a little bit different. So, this is number one. This is number two, and this is number three. There we go, that's fine. Um, so I need to clean this because I knew, need to use Versamark with it now. So I use this as my cleaner. I have done for years and it is just absolutely superb. Just spray some cleaner onto it. Clean it. Dry it. And that's ready to use again. So here we go with the Versamark. Um, I'm not going to use my embossing buddy on that. Pushing my luck? I don't know, possibly. Right, now we want two trees. It doesn't matter where you go because this, wherever you put the Versa mark, it's going to block out the one that you can see there. So first of all, I'll have one there. That's quite low down. So the one next to it, I'm going to do quite a bit higher. Now if you tilt that, you can't see it from there, but if you tilt it towards the light, you can see where your tree is. Okay, so I'm going to do this one about here. Definitely taller. that up for a moment. Now I'm going to use gold embossing powder. Mm. 
Come on. There we go. Okay, now at this stage, oops. Now at this stage you can still see where the dark, really dark black is underneath there. But with a couple of minutes of heat embossing that's going to go. So sorry about the noise. deciding is once we've um, I need the layering circles dies and this is number five but once you've cut the the um, window in your uh, top layer then you can decide where what kind of the whereabouts you want your picture to go which is why it, I've done this particular size. In fact, I think I've. Yes, I should have said to. No, that's right, that's right. It's a wider side across there. Okay, so that should be landscape. So you can move your circle wherever you want to go and it'll fit in. Right, so that's done. Let's leave that on one side. Put those back where they came from. Now we need to do this for the verse. I don't need that for that, and I don't need that for that. Okay, so that's the verse, and that's the sentiment for the front. Now these, I do use my embossing buddy. I think that's the wrong side, isn't it? Yep. There's always a right side and a wrong side if you cut your cardstock with a trimmer because the way the blade is, it automatically pushes the fibres down so you get a ridge on the reverse side. This side? No, that's fine. Okay, now I think my stamps are more or less straight. Which is a good start for me. Now all I need to do is get it straight onto the cardstock. So first mark. This one isn't the end of the world if it isn't particularly straight, because we do need to trim this one. might be straight actually. So there's that one finished with. But we don't need the trees again, move that over. Now the verse, make sure you've got it up the right way. I'm just going to line this up straight there. And I'm going to position this towards the top of my layer. Coming a bit low down, aren't I? Mm. Okay, right, let's try this then. What I'm doing is I've gone through a lot of trouble to try and make sure my stamp is straight. So as I'm looking at this now, I'm trying to see that
where these, this writing is starting level with that line down there, it should line up with this one here. Um, but it looks if I might be a bit crooked here. Might be all right. Now the other thing that I want to do while we're doing heat embossing is I don't know whether you noticed but I have a pearl there and it was white pearl but I've heat embossed it with our gold embossing powder so I want to show you how I did that. Okay so what I did was I took a my sheet with my pearls on and I'm going to take that one there but I need something to hold on to that was the one I used before I'm going to cut that there we do have um, gold pearls but they're quite a bit smaller than this so if I leave those two there like that now the way you get your verse mark onto this very easily is just to push it on your pad there and just make sure you get all the sides as well. Now obviously you'll get Versamark onto your bit of paper as well so that's going to get embossed. Okay. Right so if I leave that like that, pop that over there Let's get this with embossing powder, then I can do all three at the same time, or one after another. I can see some on the edge there. Maybe where I touched it with my fingers. Right, so that one would be okay to do. And this one. There we go. Um, did I bring over the lid? I thought I just took it off. Oh well. Um, right, so I'm going to use my tweezers to hold this little one. Then I can pick that one up quite easily if I can see them fingerprint on there as well. That's better. And then this. In fact, should we... No, I'll do that one last. Right, okay. More noise. Bear with me. When you do heat embossing, just go over it slowly and as soon as you see it turn, move on to the next bit. You're not doing yourself any favours by just keeping it there all the time and heating and heating. It won't make it go any further, um, but it can spoil it if you overdo it. this one last time didn't I? Right let's see. Now the one that you've seen on my card I heat embossed it twice. Now as you saw I tipped it sideways so that the heat tool could reach those bits there. Let me bring that I think you can see how shiny that is anyway can't you? 
and that's just done once. Um, you can, I believe, I haven't tried this, but I believe if you dip that straight into your embossing powder um, while it's still hot, it will um, give you a second coat. But I prefer to give it a second coat like this. Again, push it so that the sides are getting Versa mark on as well. Um, Okay, so I've got more powder on there. See all the shine has gone. But you can't really see it now, can you? It's disappeared. Right. mine straight away just in case this all dried hard on it there we go that's it so I'm going to put that to one side until I'm ready for oh I think it has other ideas. Right, over there. Right, okay. So what do we need to do next? This is going to be for the front of our card. We need to decide where our circle is going to go. So that's going to be die cutting. And then we are going to... We've got to die cut the circle as well. And we've got to die cut this and the butterfly and these two. Right. When I was preparing this, I thought I'm going to be going backwards and forwards to the big shot, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. But I think I might be about to surprise myself. In fact, let's move this gold, dime, uh, gold pearl over there. Right, let me just bring my big shot over and we'll do everything apart from the embossing, uh, yeah, dry embossing. So first of all we do this one. I'll show you where the position, oops, come back, no, 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 don't you go down there. Oh, that's it, nearly lost my gold strip. Um, as I was saying, to see the position of where I've done my circle. Now the circle, the actual cut circle, is bigger than the gold. Okay, so the actual circle underneath there is probably about that size there. So just think, bear that in mind when you're positioning where your die is going to go. So with the layering dies on this one, we are going to cut the larger, and that's number seven. And I am leaving what I imagine to be, I don't know, it's about half an inch there and there. Um, let's see what happens with that. And where's my, I should have a shim here somewhere because my poor um, big shot is getting a little bit loose in the, uh, the grip. It's not gripping too well. Um, oh, let me just take another piece. Hold on. Right.
Okay, save that for something. Um, so we next need dry emboss that. Now to do this one, you can use the number two die from the rectangle stitch, uh, stitched, that one there, the regular ones, let's pop that down for a moment, if you use that to die cut it straight like that, you finish up with your sentiment looking like this, with very small gold edges, which I'm not sure looks that good with such a thick edging around the circle. This one had a much thicker edging, which I was happier with, but I did this differently. I didn't do it by using this. So I'm going to try a third way with you and what I am going to do is we are going to be trimming the edges off of here so it doesn't matter if I finish up with cut lines on there. But what I'm going to do is I am going to put my die and you can use any die as long as it comes over either end there and I'm just going to position that where I want it to come along under Christmas. It looks like that's got a bit of a bow in it, that's better. Okay so make sure that looks straight there. There we go. Okay, so I've got my stitched line at the bottom there. Now I'm going to do a stitched line at the top and again I'm bringing that down closer so that I can have the wider bits, the wire, the, the wider edging, gold edging. Let me just see if that's straight and block out that bit because that's a little bit misleading. Right, okay. Um, cut that. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you may have a set of dies called, I think they're stitched labels, yeah. That's this set here. If you've got these dies, you'll have that one there. And what that does, is it puts that decoration onto your cardstock. They've also got that one which does the little crosses there. Okay. So if you had that one you wanted to use out, what you'd need to do is put that which way just by your stitched edge. I'll show you when I come to do that one, it'll be easier. It's probably not a good idea to do it on this particular bit. Okay, so that's closer to that size, so I can have the wider layers, edges. And it's quite a bit smaller to that one. Okay, so I've cut quite a bit off. So that's good. Happy about that. Um, 
right can't do any more to that just yet now these two pieces rather than having a whole gold piece that goes all the way underneath what I'm going to do is I am going to again take the in fact I'm using the little one this time because I know that that is big enough okay so I'm going to put that on there and then my other one I am going to put there you can do one at a time if you prefer but that's nice and straight and make sure that's nice and straight from where I'm sitting yep, it is doesn't really matter does it because it's you're going to be using the cut bit anyway So that's going that top bit there is going to be what your is going to form your edging. So I don't need those. And that's going to be for our butterfly. And I saw the oh here it is. Oh I want to show you this as well. Recently I've been looking for bows for my cards and the amount of times I have to go through my uh, folder where I've got photocopies of all my stamp set, uh, all my dies and having a look at which die sets I've got a bow in so I found three so what I've done now is I've put them in my little notebook these are the th three bows that they are this one obviously needs the stamp to go with it because it looks funny like that this one has a stamp but as I showed you you don't really need it um, and I believe that's just a stamp on its own, that one. So now all I need to do is look at the names of the... Um, in fact, I've written down the... No, that's right, cup of chair. Um, look for the name of the dies. Right, so... That one. So you put the paper inside. Did it work? Oh yes. Okay, so that's my bow. Pop that on there. Don't need that. So now the only other thing I need to do is to dry emboss this. And um, because I'm using my subtle dynamic embossing folder, I think now if you order this, you get the subtle 3D. Because this one's the Sizzix ones, if it's dynamic, it's 3D, it, it's uh, stamping up. So, yep, spray it. You won't be able to see me do this, but you'll hear. Wait, so, bear with me. A bit of dirt on that. Right. Um, one there. Now you put your cardstock in this way or that way. I like my lines to go across the cardstock. And you want the right side of your cardstock facing down. That's facing down to the side where you've got the Sizzix name. I think that looks... Yep, that looks straight. So now I need to change my platform. I have been using my magnetic platform. Now I'm going over to my regular Big Shot platform. And I need just one cutting mat to go with this. And always put your, just making sure I'm doing it, <laughs> put 
put the fold on your embossing folder through first. It puts far less pressure on that crease there. And there we are, lovely amount of design on there, nice amount of pattern. Right, so I think now we might be ready to put our card together. Oh, no, try putting your platform in first. So let's put this piece together first. Now we know the height is okay. So we're going to put this on and decide how high you want that to be. Okay, that looks about right for me. So I am going to put my Tombow on this bit. In fact, I'm going to bring the sheet back so that I can dab any excess glue off. quite as much have I? That was better than that one though. Okay. I'm quite happy to leave it at that thickness. Now let's do the other side. The other, yeah, the other side, the bottom. Just try and get the same amount top and bottom. But watching where your edges are going to come. Right, very gently go down a bit, please. That's it. Yep, that's good. Now, when you do this, one word of advice is don't allow this gold piece overlap that gold piece because what happened when I did that on this one I don't know whether you can oh, I think you can see it can you see that it's like a bump there you can see the extra thickness I'm sure you can I can see it on the screen in front of me so hopefully it's showing yeah it is yeah you can see that okay and that's because I allowed these two to overlap not a good idea now in preparation, I'm not ready to do this yet, I'm going to put my dimensionals on here. Uh, yes, I did three and three and then I just brought in two little ones to do in the centre there just to give it a little bit of support. Oh, I know I... Oh, you silly person, shouldn't have done that. I need to cut those ends off. Uh... Oh dear, bear with me. Oops. Sometimes these are quite easy to pull off as long as you haven't pushed them on there. Once you've applied pressure, then that is it. They're not going to come off. Oh, lucky girl, lucky. Well, 
Right, now I'm going to show you how to trim them to size. Look at that, all came off beautifully. Right, as you can see, we need to tidy this up. And I don't want any of the stitching showing sideways. So I have a new toy. Look at this. It's a little um, desktop trimmer. To give you an idea of size, that's my hand. It cuts paper that's six inches by four inches, but it's not going to be available to buy unless you are a stamping up demonstrator and you can buy it between now and 2nd of June 2020. Um, you can buy it and it, you also get it comes as a bundle with some um, designer series paper from the new spring summer catalogue that's coming out. So if you wanted to buy it um, you would need to sign up now, join us beforehand so that you can buy it. Um, otherwise you can get one free if you join Stamping Up between 3rd of January and 31st of March 2020. This is on top of the free gifts that you can choose, um, free products that you can choose um, and also you, if you join during celebration you also get to choose a free stamp set of your choice from the annual catalogue. So you get this, you get the samples of um, designer series paper which I've got on the shelf here behind me that I can show you. This is why we're allowed to buy it so that we can actually show people. Okay, so this it's six by six paper and it is a selection from some of the designer series packs that are in the um, new catalogue. Okay. Really beautiful designs. So you get this is what did I work this out to 48 sheets? This is the equivalent of 12 sheets of paper, isn't it? If you get, it must be 48 sheets here. So even the masculine ones you get there. So really beautiful. So if you'd like to get this for free, and this for free, and a free stamp set of your choice from the annual catalogue, and to be able to choose £130 worth of products from Clearance Rack, Spring and Summer catalogue, or the annual catalogue, um, let me know and I'll explain to you about joining up, whether you want to join as a demonstrator or as a hobbyist. A hobbyist is um, a savvy shopper, just joins to get the discount on the products they buy. So everybody is welcome. Drop me an email if you would like to know more about it. And now put it away again, I was going to use it. Um, I keep mine on my desk now because for little jobs like this, it's brilliant. Now I want to cut that end off and that end off. So all I'm going to do is slide it under there. Yep, you can see me. I'm afraid that's got lights on it. But what I'll do, can I tilt it? I doubt if I'll be able to cut like that. But I'm just lining up the M, making sure it's on the inside of this clear block there, making sure that's pushed right up the edge. Hold it. Now this is why you wouldn't be able to do this on your trimmer. It's quite okay. It's quite a thickness there for the trimmer to try and cut that. It probably would, but it's not the kind of thing I'd recommend that you do with your trimmer. Okay, so that one. Okay, so it went through that like a dose of salts. Like um, stamping up punches, it's got that really good healthy crunch to it. So there we go, beautiful. And now you know how to get one of those for free. Now let's put our card together. So first of all what we're going to do, we need to know where we want this to go. Where do we want our picture? And I know what I haven't done, didn't do that did I? Right, okay, let's find the top to my Tombow and I'll bring my Big Shot back so that I can cut my frame. Now with my frame, whereas I used number 7 for that, I'm going to use number 6, the smaller size, inside and I'm going to use the larger 
stitched shame framelits stitched shapes framelits yes the largest circle so that's number four so that's going to be on the outside that's going to be on the inside as you can see that's very tight on there which is what that's three by three so that's why I'm saying to you three and a half by three and a half you might get away easily with um, three and a quarter by three and a quarter or if you're happy taking chances like me three by three will do it she says laughing not having done it yet right so first of all that one I'm going to pop that on now you can see why I'm not recommending you do this. I really don't want to have to do this again, but let's have a look. And then pop that one in the middle. So you've got equal distance all the way around. Is that about right? Yes, that's almost there. It's only Tad's difference. So pop that on there. So let's see what we have. See, it does do it, but tight but as you know that when I put my cards together I don't I'm not I don't um, cut out bits of the layers which I know a lot of people do and you know just recently I'm so glad I'm glad that I don't because um, we've had a lot of rain over the last week or so I suppose and the further north you get I think they've had even more rain than us um, and several times the postman has delivered my Christmas cards where the edges are really soaked and the, the water has gone through onto my cards which is my fear of cutting shapes out of this and laying it into my card if the card got wet and it started separating the recipient would know and to me I that would worry me it's nightmare stuff that is right okay so what we're going to do First of all, we are going to decide what part of this picture do we want. You'll see that's too far, I can't go that high, which is just as well because I see a dirty finger mark there. Um, right, I want my gold trees there. If you go too far over, you need to cut your bits off there. But I think I am... Um, Quite happy with it to go there. Let's move it over a little bit. I'm quite happy with it anywhere on this one actually. I've got both of my black trees in it this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I let's bring my piece of paper in. I'm going to put Tombow on the outside, just a very, very little bit. Uh, is this my gluey bit, isn't it? Keep your gluey bit for glue and get another one for stamping on. As you can gather, I keep a little pile of used computer paper here so that I can use it for things like this. Although I've got my printer set up now so that everything gets done double-sided which is just as well because some people when you print out their information it, you just get their last line of their address on the second sheet what an awful waste that is right so that's just a little bit all the way round come back does it matter which is my front and which is my back I think that's the back. Right. So position that where you're happy with it to be. And that looks about right. Are my trees straight? Yes, they are. Okay, so that's right. Now I'm going to put this on.
Did I bring my tweezers over? No, I haven't done yet. Okay, so... Just get rid of the worst of it. There we are. And before I go on, I'm going to put this little bit there as well while that's still not quite dried. In fact, one of these felt, oh yeah, that end feels sticky. Okay, so I've just put a little bit of Tombow on that. If I'm approximately in the middle here, that's eight, that's, uh, oh goodness me, that's spot on, not straight but it's in the middle, okay so that's okay, let's just cut that bit off. Okay so I saved that for the next one. And the bow. So I make that go up to join onto the straight bit there. Makes it look more real, I think. Okay. Put that, blot it on the glue. Yes, you can see me doing that. Bring that back and pop that at the top. Right, so one thing I wanted to show you about this, this is for the inside and that's for on there. I prefer to use this face down in my trimmer but as I said earlier, the nature of the trimmer, the blade is pushing down, so it pushes your fibres down, so you get this ridge all the way round, and that's on the right side. So, like I always do when there are ridges where I don't want ridges to be, I use my bone folder and just flatten them down. There is another way you can cut foil, and that is if you put a piece of paper on top of it, as you put it through before you put it through the trimmer. Um, I have tried it, it works. I just prefer doing it this way. Right, so I the reason I was showing you that was because I want to bring this card in now. This isn't what I showed you earlier, but I've already put this inside on my layer, which is just as well because I see I've got dirty finger marks there. So this won't go to waste. What I will do is I will cut that one out and then I'll put it on the inside of a card like that. Okay, but now I want this to come in. So we we'll use Tombow. And what I'm going to do with Tombow is I am going to make sure that Tombow goes on the back here as well and on here. So the whole lot is adhered to the gold. Just in case I haven't adhered this brilliantly, it'll stop it coming up. This is a new bottle of um, Tombow so it is coming out very quickly. If you do this, don't go away and make yourself a cup of tea. When you come back, it will be stuck. There we go. So that will make sure everything stays where it should do. 
and I put my tape on the back for this. do now is the sentiment and put my dimensionals back on. And put those in the middle. I'm going to put over the edge in there. We did use one of you, didn't we? I'll have you there. Don't really need the other one, do I? So now decide where you want that to go. straight. The best time for me to find out is when I'm actually uh, checking over my video. It's so much easier when you're looking straight down on it. But I think that looks okay, doesn't it? Now I need my pearl. Oh, it's gone walkabouts again. Look at it. Hold on. Let's retrieve that. There we go. That's it, that's that. Did I put a couple of pearls on here as well? Basic pearls, other gems, rhinestones. Here we go. These are the little gold ones. They come in a packet with gold and silver. I've used loads of it. Oops, oh my goodness, you're all falling off. I've used absolutely loads of these. Fortunately, they're in the um, annual catalogue, so they'll still be around for quite a long time. So there we go. There's today's card. What do you think? Plenty of room down here to write your message. Yep. I think this is probably my favourite one. Only because there's not enough gap on that. I love this. Much happy with that. And um, what did I do with the other one? There we go. So what do you think? Which one do you like best? With the bow or as a bauble? As a bauble. Thick or thin? Oh, I'm going to put diamond, uh, pearls on that as well. So there we go. Many thanks for joining me today. I hope you like this. As I say, this is my last Christmas card for the year 2019. Um, if you have any questions to ask or any comments to make, please leave them in the box below the video. To access the box, you need to be watching the video on YouTube and then dep depending on which um, device you're watching it on, uh, lap something like a laptop, on the left hand side you'll find underneath about three lines of writing there'll be show more, so if you click that, that'll open up the box. If you're watching on something like a mobile phone, there's normally a down arrow on the right hand side and you click that 
and that'll open it up for you so you can write comments ask questions also in the box below will be all the measurements and I will put the me metric measurements down there as well um, all the products and each product will link back to my 24 um, 7 online stamping up shop if you'd like to know more about becoming a stamping up demonstrator um, stamping up call us all demonstrators but demonstrators call ourselves either business builders or um, hobbyists hobbyists are people who don't do demonstrations <laughs> which is why we don't call them demonstrators because they don't demonstrate um, but they are just savvy shoppers who like to get a discount on their purchases which they are very very welcome to do um, I've got plenty of them on my team of superstars so if you'd like to join me I'd love to have you um, just drop me an email and I'll let you know more about it if you have enjoyed my video and would like to be notified next time I upload another one please click on the subscribe now button down there in the right hand corner and then click on the bell um, that indicates you'd like the notifications before I go I would just like to wish you all a very very blessed Christmas and a very healthy happy new year and I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you all so very very much for the support you'll give me during the year it's very much appreciated and if it wasn't for all of you there'd be no point in me doing this so a big big genuine thank you until next time happy crafting cheerio